Good morning. Welcome everyone on the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time, those who are here presently physically and those who are joining us virtually. Daylight Savings Time ends at 2 a.m. on Sunday, November 1st. Please remember to move your clocks back and enjoy your extra hour of sleep on Sunday morning next weekend. And check out the new playlist for GIFT or Growing in Faith Together, Adult Faith Formation Program, and learn all about the celebration of all saints and souls. There are many videos, music, prayers, and activities to choose from during the month of November. You'll find this on our website and our newsletter. Today, we hear the Lord remind the Israelites of their past, where they'd come from and what they overcame. We come here today as we are now, but we must recall who we were in the past, what we have accomplished and what we have overcome. We can empathize with our neighbors for the joys, difficulties, and worries they are experiencing today that are comparable to what we ourselves have experienced. Let us thank God for the grace that brought us here today and the continued grace to see ourselves in our neighbors. And this Mass is in celebration for Father McDonald. The intention is in loving memory of Louis, Louise D'Souza and Louis Odica. Please join us in our angel song, Love Divine, all love is accepted. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Today in the Gospel, Jesus keeps it simple. Love God, love neighbor. It all depends on this. As we look back on the week just past, let's ask what has been the quality of our love, both to neighbor and our devotion to God. And if it has fallen short in any way, we ask God's pardon. Lord Jesus, teacher of justice, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, bearer of mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, prince of peace, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Look, we pray, excuse me, Almighty, ever living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cries. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner towards him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset, for this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything, for they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivered us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Aliens, widows, orphans, poor neighbors. God proclaims in the first reading that he is their protector. And he's challenging the people of Israel to treat these vulnerable ones with care. Jesus will add to the list of the Anawim, the poor ones of God, those whom we, to whom we must show compassion, uh, the hungry, the thirsty, the naked, the sick, the imprisoned. As we mark 200 years as an official diocese uh, in our state, the Diocese of Charleston, Catholics in South Carolina have tried to respond to that call to offer care and compassion to those who are in need. 
And if you'll indulge me a little bit and let me channel Father Massett a little bit too, I'd like to talk a little bit about the rich history we have of encounter with the vulnerable over these 200 years and maybe say a little bit about the future. God reminds the Israelites that at one time they themselves were aliens in a foreign land when they sojourned in Egypt. And that's why they must be compassionate to the alien in their midst. From the beginning of our diocese 200 years ago, Catholics were a very, very small minority in South Carolina. Prior to that, before we became part of the United States, Catholics were even forbidden from settling in South Carolina. And as a result, Catholics were frequently viewed as aliens, uh, oftentimes treated with as sort of marginalized or even with the object of prejudice. That's changed over the years, and partly, I would say, because from the beginning, from the very beginning, when John England, the first bishop of this diocese, arrived in December of 1820, he was welcomed, not only by the Catholics, the very few Catholics that were there, but he was often invited to, to speak at, to utilize the buildings of Protestant churches. And this was true throughout the state and throughout North Carolina and Georgia, wherever he would travel, which were all part of the diocese at that time. All the churches in Charleston tolled their bells when he died in 1842. Long before the Catholic Church embraced ecumenism, Bishop England set the tone for ecumenical cooperation, and it's stronger today than ever. We Catholics have had to learn how to be ecumenical, because we are so few in number in the midst of such a diversity of other churches. And now, also, of course, other faiths. Not now, but throughout our history. But it taught us to be open to others, to be welcoming and cooperative in matters of mutual concern. For the first 45 years of the existence of the Diocese of Charleston, African Americans remained enslaved. It's an unfortunate part of our history that Catholics who owned slaves, including one of our bishops, at least one, or benefited from the system at that time, joined in justifying this practice. It took a cataclysmic civil war to end this injustice. But in the aftermath, a de facto apartheid was created to keep black citizens second class and servile. There had been efforts to have outreach and evangelization efforts among uh, blacks in South Carolina. Bishop England set up schools that were, had to be shut down because they were illegal um, to educate slaves. This uh, diocese was visited by St. Catherine Drexel who had such a, a tremendous ministry in establishing institutions to assist black and Indian missions in this country. And she helped establish some institutions here Many religious orders served black Catholics of our diocese, Oblate Sisters of Providence, the first order that was composed of women of color in this country. The Holy Ghost Fathers, Redemptorists, Franciscans, and many others served Catholic parishes and schools with African American uh, members. After the Brown decision struck down segregation in this country, the first school in South Carolina to become integrated was St. Anne's in Rock Hill at the behest of the Oratorians there. And the Oratorians would go on to be very strong in, in the Civil Rights Movement, along with many others of great faith. Uh, I know the Oratorians were very involved with support for the Friendship Nine, the No Jail, No Bail, Jail, Jail, No Bail <laughs> uh, movement that happened there in the Civil Rights era. They were missteps, though, along the way. Prejudice kept many black Catholics from feeling welcome in predominantly white parishes. When consolidations of parishes occurred, it was often the black parish that was closed and, it, and its people told to go to the white parish. And the same occurred with black schools, black Catholic schools. We're learning, however, in Sumter, just one county over, there are still two parishes, one historically white and the other black, although those lines have largely uh, changed over the years. But the people of the two parishes have long been cooperative with each other. 
And when both parishes realized, realized they needed to consolidate, they needed to be able to grow, both of them, they both decided to give up their current churches in order to build a new church that would be welcoming for all. And I can promise you, I don't think the Confederate flag stained glass window at St. Anne's is going to move to the new parish. <laughs> Again, one of the signs of a misstep. Outreach to the poor in the state goes back. Efforts from, from parishes and from institutions, outreach to orphans by creating orphanages. Uh, the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy had an orphanage in Charleston. But Catholic Charities was started about in, in the late 1940s. And today, Catholic Charities is in a period of growth. It's amazing. Uh, it's, it's spreading out farther across the state. It's expanding its services. Uh, it's, it's good to see. In the encounter with the poor, the church has sought to alleviate the problems of poverty and assist people. People in need also included the sick. Uh, many decades ago, a Protestant couple was on a vacation to California and the husband became gravely ill and was cared for in a Catholic hospital in California. They were so impressed with that care that when they returned to South Carolina, they approached the bishop and said, we would like to help establish, and could you help us establish a Catholic hospital in Columbia? They donated the land. In the process, they also became Catholic. Some are members here at this parish, as well as at St. Peter's. And uh, the land was donated, but they didn't have yet the funds or the, or the way to, to build and staff a hospital. So the bishop, as they often did, because this was a missionary diocese, went off begging and this time he went to the Sisters of Charity of Our Lady of St. Augustine in, in uh, Ohio who had hospitals and said, could you work with us to have a hospital in South Carolina? They did. It was only years later that it was uh, revealed that the sisters mortgaged their other hospitals to borrow the money to build the one here. When the sisters sold the hospital. They bought it back eventually. And of course it got sold again later. But when they sold it that first time, with the money that was, that was cleared in that, they established what is now the largest private foundation in South Carolina, the Sisters of Charity Foundation. Still doing good work, supporting families, helping uh, students have health care, um, giving grants for so many good things across our state. Today, it continues to bless this state in many ways, even though the sisters have had to uh, pull out of the hospital by not having enough sisters. Providence Hospital is in a period of transition, but its tradition of high-quality medical care and the legacy of the Sisters of St. Augustine are treasures that came from Catholics who were committed to the vulnerable in our state. Catholic sisters, particularly the OLMs, Our Lady of Mercy sisters, that was our own diocese and order, created hospitals in some rural counties, such as York and Dillon and other places. These have since been bought and, and, uh, or incorporated into uh, more county initiatives or other hospital system initiatives, but, but it was the Catholic Church that helped get hospital services started in some of the towns of our state. An extraordinary sense of mission led many men to become priests in our diocese even though we're not from South Carolina. An example of this was Father Patrick Quinlan who was from Connecticut. He served for 24 years in Williamsburg County, King Street. And he had a very creative, very ambitious way of seeking to do what we now call the RCIA, the catechumenate, across that county, establishing chapels and efforts and catechists. And, and it was very successful. We have members of this parish that were influenced by Father Quinlan and what he did there. Uh, he was, he can, his work continues in an outreach center in King Street that is run by the Felician Sisters. Bishop Baker, two bishops ago, uh, initiated an effort for declaring Father Quinlan a saint. Someday we may have a saint who labored in our diocese. Today, the diocese is once again an immigrant church. Our task is to ensure that everyone is welcomed 
and allowed to bring his or her gifts to enrich the church. In this way, we become a sign of hope in our world. And we've been welcoming a lot of priests from other countries as well, continuing that tradition of what Father Quinlan represented. And now, we're in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. It's not the first time we've experienced an epidemic. Yellow fever was a scourge over many years in our history. And uh, some of those who cared for people with yellow fever themselves contracted it and died. There were her great heroism. Because of the pandemic now, we're reinventing parish and diocese. It's pulling us by necessity into a more technological way of being church. Hello, folks at home. <laughs> we are also trying to find our way with reduced ways of celebrating Mass and holding meetings. Our next stage in the history of the diocese will begin out of the emergence from this pandemic. We will need to find new and creative ways to rebuild the life of the church. What needs to be restored? What needs to be modified? What needs to be left dormant? With what new initiatives can we give life and vibrancy to diocese and parish? That's the challenge we'll face as we begin the next 200 years as a diocese. I have been very, very selective and, and scattered in terms of what I've remembered about the past from our diocese and history. One way the church is stretched into deeper mission and a deeper love is through its care of the alien, the poor, the widow, and the orphan. Over and over again, we Catholics have been stretched by being an alien minority, by having to come to terms with members who were enslaved or oppressed by racism, by the poor, by welcoming Im immigrants, by caring for the sick, and by educating the young. In the process of this, we've learned how loving our neighbor leads us to God and how our love of God calls us into love of neighbor. The two laws on which the whole law depends. Today, we invite every household of our parish to make a gift to a special appeal for the bicentennial of the Diocese of Charleston. With the funds that are received, Bishop Guglielmoni wants to enable the educational and charitable ministries of the church to flourish and grow. If you're able to donate, you can use the envelope that was sent to every household in the mail. Mail it to the parish office or bring it to Mass and drop it in the collection basket. You can also donate using the electronic giving method we share from our website. Thank you for your love for the church and for your generosity to it. Together we experience the love of God and share it with our neighbors. And we add to the story of all those who have gone before us in this diocese. It's a rich history to which we have the opportunity to add. And we wish to the diocese a very happy birthday. Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God. to love our neighbor as ourselves, and so we call to mind not only our needs, but the needs of our neighbors near and far. For the church, that we may always reach out to those in need with material and spiritual aid, extend God's grace to every corner of the world, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees, widows, and orphans, and all who suffer with loss and uncertainty, that they may be treated with love and compassion, so that they may find peace and serenity in difficult times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those around the world who are persecuted for their faith, and the early church and communities like Thessalonia may give them hope and inspiration, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Priesthood Sunday, for all ordained priests, that our prayers and support may give them sustenance as they grow in their ministry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here today, that we may meet challenge of accepting all people as neighbors, especially those who look, speak, or act differently than we do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of all who are ill, especially Doris Mateos, Marie Isabel Perez, and those listed in our bulletin prayer list. And for those who have died, especially Luis de Sozo, Lu Luis de Sozo, Luis Odiga, David Sotelo, Joseph Roach, Jane Rasick, El Torio Morales Torres, and for all who have died of COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now in silence, we offer prayers for those we hold in our hearts, those who have asked for our prayers, and those who no one, no one has no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Living and true God, you are our strength and our refuge. Hear the prayers of your people, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gifts are prepared. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, you who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Help us to serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. John Neumann and all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Our Father. 
who art in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. The body of Christ. Christ.
to you.